purpose of this video is to walk through a schematic of the autonomic nervous system. There are many details surrounding the circuitry of the autonomic nervous system, but if you think about it in an organized way, you'll find it simple to understand. Obviously, some things are rote memorization, like spinal segments, but if you can conceptually understand this, it's easily remembered. I hope that by the end of the video, you'll have an organized approach to the ANS, as well as an idea of the important and testable details. I also hope you can use this drawing as it is a succinct and condensed representation of the GVE distribution. Recall that the ANS is made up of general visceral afferent and general visceral efferent neurons. These neurons provide sensation to our organs and viscera, as well as motor to all smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. The GVA system is simple and is a single neuron system. The cell body locations for all GVA fibers are in dorsal root ganglia, and their cell bodies are pseudo-unipolar. The GVE system is more complicated. First, it has both a sympathetic and a parasympathetic component, both of which are two neuron systems, meaning that there are pre- and post-ganglionic cell bodies to keep track of. Since these are all motor neurons, all of the cell bodies are multipolar. Starting at the middle of the drawing, note the targets of the GVE part of our autonomic nervous system are our body's smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. The two big distributions are sympathetic on the left and parasympathetic on the right. Let's review some big picture points and compare and contrast sympathetics and parasympathetics. Starting with the sympathetics, remember these are associated with fight or flight functions, whereas parasympathetics are associated with rest and digest functions. All sympathetic preganglionics come from T1 to L2, and specifically the cell body locations are the intermedial lateral gray or lateral horn of these spinal cord segments. Parasympathetics, on the other hand, their preganglionics come from cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10, as well as spinal segments S2 through S4, specifically from the anterior or ventral horn of these spinal segments. Next, remember that sympathetics serve the body wall and use white rami. Parasympathetics do neither. Next, note the cell body locations of postganglionic sympathetics are in ch chain or collateral ganglia, as opposed to cell bodies of the postganglionic parasympathetics, which are located in terminal ganglia. The paravascular plexus, which we'll talk about as we go, contain postganglionic sympathetics and preganglionic parasympathetics. At the end, we'll talk about the pass that GVA fibers use to reach the CNS. For now, remember that GVA fibers associated with pain use sympathetic pathways to reach the CNS, whereas sensory pathways associated with reflexes use parasympathetic pathways to reach the CNS. Now we'll go over the specifics of the distribution of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Big picture, you'll see that both sympathetics and parasympathetics serve the head, thorax, foregut, midgut, hindgut, and pelvic viscera. Each of these targets is associated with specific pre- and postganglionic cell body locations. Anywhere you see an X in the drawing is where a synapse is occurring. We will go kind of from head to toe and talk about each of these targets, starting with the sympathetics, since the sympathetics are more complicated. The sympathetics serving the head arise from spinal segments T1 to T2. The preganglionics pass from these segments, traverse white rami to enter the sympathetic chain, that then travel up the chain to the head where they synapse at the superior, middle, and inferior cervical ganglia. At this point, postganglionic sympathetics use the carotid circulation to distribute to their targets in the head. This is an example of the paravascular plexus, which contains postganglionic sympathetics. Sympathetics to the thorax arise from segments T1 to T5. Realize that there are cardiac, pulmonary, and esophageal plexuses with more details, but that's outside the scope of this video. For thorax in general, preganglionic fibers arise from T1 to T5, traverse white rami to enter the chain where they synapse, and then postganglionics distribute to their targets in the thorax via direct nerves. As an example, Postganglionics to the heart utilize the direct nerves called the cervical cardiac nerves and the direct thoracic cardiac nerves. Cervical cardiac nerves come off of the cervical chain ganglia and they came from preganglionic fibers from T1 to T5 that ascended the chain and synapsed at cervical ganglia. Direct thoracic cardiac nerves, those came off of the T1 to T5 chain ganglia. Both of these direct nerves go straight to the heart.
preganglionic sympathetics to the abdomen and pelvis, travel as splanic nerves, and synapse in collateral ganglia, also called prevertebral ganglia. Splanic nerves can be found arising directly from chain ganglia. The abdomen is divided into foregut, midgut, and hindgut, and the specifics of these divisions are in the bottom left of the drawing. Sympathetics to foregut and midgut utilize thoracic splanics, which came from the thoracic cord segments T5 to T12. T5 to T9 contributes to the greater splanic nerve and serves primarily foregut structures. T10 to T11 contributes to the lesser splanic nerve and serves primarily midgut structures. T12 gives rise to the least splanic nerve and serves mainly the kidneys and gonads. Preganglionic fibers from these segments T5 to T12 use white rami to reach the chain ganglia. They pass through the chain without synapsing and come off the chain ganglia at their same level. These preganglionic fibers from these different levels coalesce to form the greater, lesser, and least splanic nerves. These splanic nerves then pass behind the diaphragm and synapse at collateral ganglia in the abdomen. The postganglionic sympathetic fibers then distribute on the abdominal arteries to reach their artery, to reach their targets. We can note here that once again this is an example of the paravascular plexus which contains postganglionic sympathetics. Hindgut and pelvis are served by the lumbar splanics coming from L1 and L2. L1 forms mostly the upper lumbar splanic which serves hindgut. L2 forms mostly the lower lumbar splanic which serves the pelvis. There are also sacral splanics but these are outside the scope of this video. Something that isn't on the drawing but must be noted is that the sympathetics also serve the body wall, their targets being the sweat glands, erector pili muscle, and vascular smooth muscle. These sympathetics that are destined from the body wall arise from all segments T1 to L2 and they utilize the sympathetic chain to reach their targets. Sympathetic neurons destined for the body wall are the only neurons that utilize gray rami. Postganglionic fibers from the chain ganglia rejoin the spinal nerve via these gray rami and distribute to the body wall via ventral and dorsal rami. Now for the parasympathetics, which are simpler. Remember that parasympathetic preganglionics come from cranial nerves 3, 7, 9, and 10, as well as spinal segments S2 through S4. This is why this is called the craniosacral distribution. Parasympathetics serving the head come from cranial nerves 3, 7, and 9. The preganglionic parasympathetics arise from motor nuclei in the head, and they synapse at named terminal ganglia of the head, which reside near their targets. The specifics of this are outside the scope of this video, but you can see the names of these terminal ganglia in the top right of the drawing. Cranial nerve 10, also the, called the vagus nerve, provides preganglionic parasympathetics to the thorax, foregut, and midgut. These preganglionic fibers travel along arteries serving their targets to ultimately synapse at terminal ganglia at that particular target. This is another example of the paravascular plexus, but note that this time it contains preganglionic parasympathetics. S2 to S4 form the pelvic splanics, which uh, provide the preganglionic parasympathetics to the hindgut and pelvis. The preganglionics for the hindgut and pelvis go on pelvic and hindgut arteries to reach their respective terminal ganglia at their target structures. These pelvic splanic nerves arise directly from the sacral ventral rami. Now that you understand the main organization, we will revisit the perivascular plexus. Autonomic nerve fibers are very organized and they reach their targets by traveling on arteries that are going to the same place that they are going. By nature of the type of ganglia that sympathetic and parasympathetic synapse at, the fibers that are traveling on these arteries will be either pre- or post-ganglionic. Since sympathetics synapse at chain or collateral ganglia, which are located near the proximal portion of the arterial tree, they have already synapsed by the time the artery they are riding on has formed. Thus, the paravascular plexus contains postganglionic sympathetics. Conversely, parasympathetics do not synapse until they reach terminal ganglia, which is right next to or within their target. So, the parasympathetics in the paravascular plexus are going to be preganglionic. The last detail we'll discuss is the GVA pathways. GVA impulses from viscera can be divided into either reflex pathways or pain pathways. The type of uh, impulse dictates the path that that afferent fiber will take to reach the CNS. 
Reflex pathways utilize parasympathetics to reach the CNS. For example, a GVA neuron in the thorax sensing changes in blood pressure in the heart will travel retrograde to the sensory ganglion associated with the vagus nerve, since the vagus nerve is the one that supplies thorax. Likewise, a reflex GVA sensation from the bladder will travel retrograde on the pelvic splenix to reach the dorsal root ganglia of S2 to S4. Pain pathways, on the other hand, utilize sympathetic pathways to reach the CNS, but it's a little more complicated. For example, cardiac chest pain will travel retrograde on sympathetic nerves serving the heart and will re-enter the sympathetic chain by utilizing white rami. Once they reach the chain, they will travel to the dorsal root ganglia associated with the thorax, which are at T1 to T5. The thing to note here is that pain follows sympathetic pathways, reflexes follow parasympathetic pathways. Also, now you can add to the list of things that white rami do. Not only do they have GVE preganglionic sympathetics, but they also have GVA fibers associated with pain. Now refer to the bottom right of the screen for some important kind of high yields. First, white rami are only located at T1 to L2, since these are the only spinal levels associated with sympathetics. Next, gray rami are located at all 31 spinal levels. And the thing not to forget is that they are the only, the only thing that's associated with them are the postganglionic sympathetics that are destined for the body wall. Remember that white rami carry preganglionics only, whereas gray rami carry only postganglionics. You'll notice on your cadaver that white rami are larger and are lateral to gray rami. The last thing is please note that splanchnics carry preganglionic fibers only. I hope this video was helpful and let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, and good luck with learning autonomics.